Hi everyone, thanks for clicking and welcome back to my channel. Today, we will be talking about everything you need to know about the URs. Before we get started though, kindly consider helping the channel grow by subscribing and liking the video should you find it helpful. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. VOR stands for Very High Frequency Omnidirectional Range. The word Omni means in all directions, or 360 degrees. It is a navigational aid, or navate for short, used for both in-route navigation as well as non-precision approaches. VORs operate in the VHF band frequency from 108 MHz to 117.95 MHz, both inclusive. And since it operates within the VHF band, VOR signals are strictly line of sight. Meaning, even if you are in close range of VOR, and there is, for instance, a mountain between your aircraft and the VOR, you will not be able to receive the signal. Okay? Each VOR is identified using a station name, a station three letter code, and three letters Morse code, and a frequency. In order to use the VOR, you have to follow these three easy steps. Tune, identify, and twist. First, you tune in the frequency. Then you identify. If your aircraft is G1000 or G3000 equipped, the Garmin will automatically do it for you and will identify the station. And will display the three letter codes in green next to the frequency box. Otherwise, you may need to identify the station using Morse code. Now that we have tuned, identified the correct station, we twist the OBS knob, where well, OBS stands for Omnivariant Selector. It's the knob we twist to select which radio we would like to fly. Also, I would like to clear up one misconception, is that radio and the aircraft heading are not the same. You might be on radio 090 and facing north, south, southwest, etc. As shown in front of you, all these aircraft are on the 090 radio. However, they are facing different directions. The aircraft onboard VOR equipment looks like this in the older model of analog gauges type of airplanes, such as Cessna 150, 172, 182, etc. And other old trainers as well. However, as technology evolves, the modern aircraft employ glass cockpit avionics, and this is how the VOR indicator looks like on the G1000. Please keep in mind though, that this is not actually a VOR, it's rather an HSI, Horizontal Situation Indicator. It is a heading indicator and CDI, course deviation indicator combined. In order to reduce space and for better situational awareness, they have decided to combine both the DG, or Directional Gyro, or Heading Indicator, whatever you prefer to name it, and the CDI all in one instrument. Now, what is the difference between a VOR and CDI, you may ask? Well, a VOR is usually a standalone instrument which picks only the VOR signals. CDI, or HSI, on the other hand, depending on the navade you tune in to, you may receive GPS information, ILS signal, in addition to VOR signals all in one instrument. Now, let's look at how VORs are denoted on various aeronautical charts. These are the symbols you will come across on most VFR charts. The first is the standalone VOR, meaning this VOR facility will provide you with only bearings. With other words, where you are in relation to the VOR and what radio you are on. It has no capability to broadcast your range from the facility or how far are you as it is not coupled or paired with DME. DME stands for Distance Measuring Equipment. It is a completely different system that transmits VHF signals based on which you get distance information should your aircraft be equipped to receive such signals. Most aircrafts, if not all, nowadays are equipped and most VORs are paired with DMEs, so you shouldn't worry about that. When it is the case, VOR DME facility will be represented as such on VFR maps. Sometimes you may also find this symbol. This is a VORTAC combination of VOR DME and ATACAN or tactical air navigation. You may think of ATACAN as the military version of our VOR DME. VORTAC normally have a frequency for civilian use and also some military aircraft as well as a channel for sole use by the military. Okay? Now before we move on to the summary, please keep in mind that VORs are not only used in navigation but also in approaches, non-precision approaches to be precise. Why non-precision, you might ask? It's because it only provides us with lateral guidance or runway alignment without vertical guidance. Now, let's revise what we have seen in this video so far. VOR stands for Very High Frequency Omnidirectional Range, 
it is a navigate facility on the ground used for both air navigation and non precision approaches. It operates in the VHF band from 108 MHz to 117.95 MHz inclusive. VOR signals are line of sight signals. These are the VOR symbols you may come across on both VFR maps and IFR charts. VOR will only provide range information if it's paired with DME, distance measuring equipments. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this brings us to the end of this video. If you have any questions or if you would like me to make a video about any topic that you might be struggling with, kindly go ahead and leave it in the comment section below and I'll be more than happy to do so. So until the next video, see ya.